We are looking to deploy all-terrain armored transports en masse to crush rebel resistance. Look no further than the massive Y-85 Titan dropship. What's up, mana nerds? Today we'll be breaking down the Incom Y-85 Titan, exploring its stats, capabilities, and role in Imperial forces throughout the Galactic Civil War era and beyond. Using both canon and legend sources, we'll construct a full picture of this craft and learn about its essential role in the Imperial War Machine. The imp's deployment of massive war machines such as the all-terrain armored transport and its myriad variants required an equally massive transport dropship to shuttle these armored behemoths from orbit to planet side. The Incom YD-5 Titan filled this role, measuring an estimated 75 meters long and 35 meters wide. It was so large it could not fit aboard the hangars of Imperial-class Star Destroyers. It was rather transported in the cavernous berths of Dreadnought-class vessels such as the Executor-class Super Star Destroyers. This chunky dropship made full use of its incredible internal space, however, able to simultaneously transport four AT-ATs in addition to four AT-ST scout walkers, or sections of the prefabricated garrisons that Imperial forces favored so much as outposts or forward operating bases. The AT-ATs were stored two forward and two to the rear, above the enormous repulsor units required to keep the Titan afloat. Each of the two AT-AT bays were serviced by cranes and gantries, allowing personnel to board the walkers en route, and for mechanics and technicians to perform maintenance and basic repairs. A rotating rack carrying the Titan's quartets of AT-STs divided the two bays, allowing servicing by multiple angles. The armored, sloping frontal edge of the Titan served as an ablative shield to burn off heat when entering planetary atmospheres at high speeds, and terminated at the rooftop double-decker command module. This cockpit space was roomy enough for dozens of personnel, with additional quarters below and behind the main command unit. The rear deck of the Titan, like the Separatist's multi-troop transport, was covered with exhaust vents to redirect the enormous heat signatures generated by such large repulsor units. In battle, Titans would be escorted by TIE fighters and dropped into zones with minimal resistance in order to safeguard their valuable cargo. But as a last resort, the Titan was armed with two twin heavy laser cannons, which is an enormous armament, an order of magnitude larger than the AT-AT's main guns. Again, much like the MTT, these guns were semi-fixed and locked in the forward position, indicating that their use is more for destruction of buildings, fortifications, and terrain features than nimble enemy fighters or vehicles. With its all-around ablative shielding, the Titan resembled more a flying bunker than a dropship, with even the command module's screen protected by thick, armored shutters. While shooting a Titan out of the sky along with their payload would be a prime objective for Rebel commanders, this was easier said than done. That thick armor provided considerable protection, and when deployed for a combat drop, Titans would move from the hangars of their SSD parent ship through the escorting armada to a drop point above the planet, most likely shepherded by swarms of escorting ties. From here, their drop zone would be calculated, probe droids and orbital scanning confirming the terrain stability of the landing zone, while bombers and orbital strikes softened up defenses. When ready, the Titans would plunge into the atmosphere, their ablative armor glowing white hot as they plummeted. Their rapid descent would minimize their time under enemy guns, the repulsors only engaging in time to slow the behemoths to a survivable speed before they made contact with the planet. A formation Titan landing, like the MTT on steroids, would kick up a massive wave of sand, snow, dirt, or other debris, the repulsor lifts roaring to keep the craft stable. From here, the AT-ATs would deploy, the first two from the front bay dropping, followed by the second pair in the back. It's an interesting design choice for the imps to go with a true dropship, with only its ablative armor to shield its descent rather than a more traditional lander, operating like a standard ship. But it does fit in perfectly with the shock and awe tactics preferred by Imperial AT-AT commanders, who we all know and love. In other cases, such as the Battle of Hoth, Imperial commanders chose to deploy their barges much further from the Rebel defenses, and chose to trek their AT-ATs overland to reach their targets, limiting their risk, and if they're honest, it was out of a respectful fear for the Rebel defenses, knowing not even the Emperor's great army was invincible. Titans were also used on aquatic worlds to deploy the AT-AT's water-based variant, the AT-AT Swimmer, with Titans landing directly on the ocean surface while disgorging the swimmers directly below into the sea. The fact that Incom produced this craft, along with its smaller cousin, the Theta-class AT-AT Barge, may raise a few eyebrows given that they were responsible for the creation of the X-Wing. Remember, after the X-Wing designs made it out of Incom, the Empire nationalized the company and replaced many of its staff with loyalists to the regime. Sadly, Incom products became known for their mediocrity, nothing exceptional, just enough to perform to standard, while the Y-85 may be the largest product to ever come from Incom's yards. The size I gave is based on the AT-ATs. There's no official number, but like I said, it must be about 75 meters long, 35 wide, and about 40 meters tall, making its footprint not much smaller than a full American football field, or more than three basketball courts in size, and equal to the height of about a 13-story building. 
With those dimensions, it's no surprise the Titan could only fit aboard Dreadnought-sized Imperial warships, being much too large for Imperial Star Destroyer hangars. Only the most serious planetary engagements during the Imperial War would call for a quads of AT-ATs, along with their Super Star Destroyer support, at which point a rebel could only hope for a noble and quick death. An Executor class Super Star Destroyer's complement of 30 AT-ATs could be deployed in one wave by just 8 of these barges. So that's it for the breakdown, and as for behind the scenes facts, the Imperial class Star Destroyer was originally supposed to be able to carry 12 of these barges before author Curtis Saxton realized the ridiculous size implications of this, and the Theta class was created to hold 1 to 2 AT-ATs aboard, while the Titans were relegated to use aboard Super class ships. The method of deployment for AT-ATs on Hoth has gone back and forth between canon and legends, with the most recent canon information suggesting that Gazanti class cruisers were used to deploy Blizzard Force, with older legends information suggesting the deployment of Titans. As cool as this actual dropship is, logistics-wise it would be simpler to just use Gazantis. But what do you guys think about this thing? Please comment down below if you hope to see something like this in some upcoming live action. Well, let's thank our sponsor Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. In 2020, there were 5 million crashes reported. That's 15,000 a day, or 600 an hour. And most people think it's just too complicated to get a lawyer to represent them. Morgan & Morgan wants to change that, modernizing the profession and bringing it into the 21st century. If you get their app, you can submit a claim in 8 steps or less, all from the comfort of your couch. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com or dial pound law, that's pound 529, to get more information. And be sure to check out Morgan & Morgan. They have 24-7 support, always ready to help. Check out these videos, I'm sure you'll like them. But most important of all, remember, Incom was, Incom was responsible for both the rebel victory at Yavin and the Empire's strike back, that crushing defeat on Hoth. Because the corporations are the only ones stronger than the Jedi and Sith. And the Force will be with you. Always.